the most sacred of relationships, yet time and life make it fragile. Love, trust, respect and desire, all elements of a successful marriage. Yet so many of us along the way forget. We lead busy lives. We go through changes, big and small. We build walls to protect ourselves. It does not have to be this way. There are clear and exciting ways to bring your marriage and life back on track. Welcome to the Couples Expert Podcast with Stuart Fensterheim. Hello and welcome again to another edition of the Couples Expert Podcast. Today is November 27th and I hope everyone had an incredibly fantastic, loving Thanksgiving. One of the things about Thanksgiving is there's a myth that when you eat turkey, there's an amino acid in it called tryptophan, and that it's supposed to make you really, really sleepy, and also not have you feel like doing anything but lying down. So I have a question for all of you. Perhaps that's why you didn't make love to your wife last night. Or was it? The other possibility is that you're just really bored in the bedroom. Being bored sexually is one of the top issues that I get to talk about in my office. I have to tell you, the last thing I feel when I go to work is bored because I get to talk about sexuality, relationships, and really just being close. So what we're going to be talking about today is how to banish boredom in the bedroom. And this is not going to be one of your PG-rated discussions. This is definitely going to be R-rated or maybe even X-rated. So if there are children around you, I highly recommend that you don't have them be around this recording when you're listening to it or put those earbuds in because we're going to be pretty graphic and specific in our discussions. First and foremost is this concept of monogamy. And for many of us, it is synonymous to just plain vanilla boring sex. Gone is the thrill of those one-night stands, steamy hookups that make sex so exciting. Instead, you get to have sex with the woman who gave birth to your child and you got to watch all of that. The person who you've heard them fart, pick their nose, and gone days and days without shaving or showering. So how in the heck do you keep it sexy? So what we're going to be talking about is, in spite of all of that, to really have the concept that you and your partner can create the most exciting, erotic, sexual relationship of anyone that you know. And we're going to talk about some of the specific ways, and some of these may not be for everyone, but what I want you to do is really pay attention, and when you listen to this, think about Does this fit for us? Can I make this work? If it doesn't, throw it away. Don't pay attention to it. But for some of you, it's going to be, wow, why haven't we thought about this? We need to put this into action right away because we want a sex life that's exciting and stimulating. I think the first part of this is we have to acknowledge that we're having some difficulties, that there has been either a big drop-off on the frequency of your sexual relationship, or even worse, is that you may be having sex, but when you do it, it just feels so routine and boring. Listen, it's not a nightmare if you're having little sex. It's just important to acknowledge it. You have to acknowledge if your sex life has been fading and really do a little bit of an assessment as to why that is the case. You have to accept the fact because accepting it will help you make the changes necessary to really spice up your relationship in the bedroom. Now, one of the questions you have to ask yourself is why aren't we having sex? For some of you, it's going to be because life is just really, really hectic. Perhaps you have young children and you're not sleeping well at night. 
Of course, that's going to affect your physical and your emotional relationship. But for most people, it's not those physical things. For the majority of people who I see in my office, the reason that the sex is not going well has to be more that you and your partner are in a slump and emotionally disconnected. And that one of the things you need to do is really build up the closeness, the emotional connection by doing things like listening to my steward's daily notes or really taking your partner and developing rituals that really talk about having emotional connections. You want to try to see the root cause of why you're not having sex as often as you once did. One of the first things you could do and one of the first suggestions I have is start having sex not in the bedroom. Find other locations, find other places that could really help stimulate you. The other thing about this is that when you're sitting watching television or you're sitting having just a relaxing time, now this suggests, by the way, that the two of you have a lot of affection going on non-sexually. If that's not the case, you need to work on that before you do any of these other suggestions. But you don't have to wait until you're naked to be sexual with your partner. For some people, that's an eye-opening thing. For others, that's a duh, of course. So if you're sitting there watching the news, start rubbing your partner's back, rubbing their legs, nibbling on their ears. Watch Channel 12 News talking about our president, Donald Trump, doing his last crazy thing, and in the meantime, sucking on your wife's earlobes. It makes the news a lot more fun. Those are the kinds of things you have to really remember that your sexual relationship and foreplay begin when you wake up in the morning, you see your partner, and you go, I am the luckiest person alive because that person is mine, and I'm the only one that gets to see them naked. That when I wake up, I look over and go, I get to love, argue, make up, make love, and build a life with this one person. That's what starts the stimulation for me. That's the beginning of the foreplay. If you don't have that, all the things that I'm going to be talking about today don't work because you have to have a relationship where both of you feel heard, communicate on a regular basis, you're authentic, and you're vulnerable. You have to not be afraid to touch. Some people come from environments that have not been ones in which touch has been part of the relationship or touch has been part of your experience. If you were raised in an environment in which your mom and dad were not affectionate and touchy-feely people, you have work to do. You have to find an avenue to learning how to touch, how to touch people emotionally, and how to touch people physically in gentle, stimulating ways. One of the best ways to do this is public acts of affection. And some people say, oh, I don't do that. I don't do PDA. I don't do public displays of affection. Well, you're missing out. The more you can publicly display your love and affection of each other, the better your sex life will be. Because people love to know that you are proud of them and want to show the world that your love for them is real. Now, if your partner says, please don't do that, it makes me uncomfortable, I'm not suggesting you do it anyway. I'm saying, if you and your partner are ones that are comfortable with this, if you start touching each other on a regular basis, every opportunity you can, 
your sex life will improve. What needs to go along with this is you need to be complimenting each other. You need to show your partner that you appreciate who they are, that they are someone that you love to be with and that you love to play around with. And that playfulness can then lead into the bedroom. You have to be a couple that communicates, and we talked a little bit about that already. One of the suggestions, as I made a moment ago, is have sex everywhere and anywhere other than your bedroom for a while. Take it out of the routine. Take it out of the bedroom. Everyone has sex in the bedroom. Be that couple that has sex other places. It doesn't have to be in weird places. It can be in the bedroom, but not yours. Go in one of the kids' rooms. Go into the guest room. Go into the laundry room. There are a lot of places that you can have sex. Spend the night at a hotel. It's amazing what happens when you're relaxed. I think part of the challenge for many people is their sexual relationship is being fit in. You're up all day, you're working hard, you get home, you need to sort of chill out a bit. It becomes nine and 10 o'clock at night, and then you go to bed and you try to be intimate, and you can barely keep your eyes open. And you wonder why it feels boring, because you're squeezing it in into a time that isn't really relaxing. Sex is supposed to be fun and playful and something where you can spend time. If you're rushing it because otherwise you're gonna fall asleep, and so many of us have had that experience, you're not gonna have an exciting, spicy sexual relationship. Going on vacation, going to a hotel for a weekend in itself will spice up your sexual relationship. What I'd like to do is take a quick break now and just talk about my sponsor. This episode is sponsored by the Two Days Seven Conversation Weekend. One of the things that's true is that you don't have to give up on your relationship for feeling lost or as if something is missing. You just need to know how to connect with your partner in a way that allows the two of you to feel loved and appreciated. But the problem is that many couples don't have the tools they need to navigate the ups and downs of a relationship without causing relationship injuries to each other. Yet they wonder what happened to the friendship they used to share. How did they get from where they were in the beginning of the relationship to where they are now? feeling alone, disappointed, and hurt, and why they can't seem to move forward and be happy again. Thankfully, this problem can be fixed, and that's where the two days and seven conversation Hold Me Tight workshop comes in. In just two days, you will understand what you and your partner need to have a relationship where both of you are on the same page, working together to have that close relationship you once only dreamed about. Check it out at the www.thecouplesexperts.com on Relationship Weekend. And thank you for paying attention to this. Now let's go back to the show. The key here is how do you keep it sexy? Now, with, and I think I mentioned this a moment ago, these ideas are not for everyone. But some of you might take some value in this. So one of the first ones is sex in public. Now, we're not talking about having sex in a way that will get you arrested, but you might want to do is go to a deserted field really late at night. The thrill of being outside in fresh air and the possibility of being seen is really stimulating for some folks. And one of the things you may want to consider if the two of you are daring, is having sex in public. Now, public could be your backyard, behind your own wall. But the thrill of doing something that's a little bit on edge sometimes can really help couples reignite their relationship. The other one in, in the movie 
50 Shades of Grey got people interested in bondage and having your partner tie you up and teasing your partner. One of the most funny things is a couple that I was talking to, when they were telling me this story, they couldn't stop laughing because (laughs) the issue was the husband couldn't figure out how to tie the knots. And the wife, during all of the, their sexual experience, was teasing him that the knots weren't any good, particularly because he used to be a Boy Scout. But doing some soft bondage can really help couples at times really have a really fun exercise. And you can go to some of the adult shops and buy some things for that. We'll come back to that when we start talking about sex toys. But the other thing is spanking. Spanking your partner sexually can really be a turn on for some people. You know, joking about being a really, really bad boy and that the spanking is what I need to really get me in the mood. Those are the kinds of situations that really can be enjoyable for couples. Another possibility for some of you is anal sex. Anal sex is something that is not for everyone. And whenever I think about anal sex in my life, one of the really strangest experiences I had was in college. There was a girl in college that I knew that was interested in having sex with me. But I've struggled a little bit with it because she had a boyfriend. And what she told me is that she and her partner had this agreement that as long as I had sex with her, not vaginally, but anal sex, then she wasn't cheating. It's a little bit bizarre, if you think about it, but one of the things about anal sex that it has a huge stigma. Some people like this an awful lot, others don't. The suggestions, though, I have is twofold with this. Number one, You really need to use a lot of lube because in order to really have this not be a painful experience, lube is necessary. The other thing you have to be very careful about is that if you're inserting your penis in the anus, you can't then just right away go vaginally because you'll create a a very serious infection. So you need to make a decision, one or the other, which is going to be one that you would like to do, and you have to stick with that. Another suggestion may be, for some couples, watching porn together can be stimulating, and trying to to copy some of what goes on on the video and doing that in your bedroom can really excite a lot of couples. And it, it also opens up possibilities of having discussions about fantasies and threesomes and things like that. So watching pornography together, as long as both people are comfortable with it, is it. The other thing that someone once shared with me is something called a grapefruit blowjob. Now, what that is, is where you take the penis and you put it in a half of a grapefruit. Now, there needs to be a lot of trust with this. And basically, your partner then gives you a blowjob with the grapefruit on and the citrus and the taste and everything is supposed to be incredibly stimulating. I have to be honest, I've not tried this. So this is one of those suggestions that the couples expert is making, saying, if you try this, send me an email at podcast at thecouplesexperts.com and let me know how that goes. What goes along with that is mutual masturbation. Masturbation is an interesting one because so many people have been brought up with masturbation not being a, a something that they're comfortable with, and particularly for some religious reasons. So you have to make sure that this is okay with you. But mutual masturbation is really a wonderful thing Because what it allows you to do is see what your partner does to turn themselves on. 
One of the, the most important concepts here is you need to know your body and how your body works and what's stimulating to be able to share that with your partners. And the more that you can do that, the more that you and your partner can watch each other stimulate yourself and see how you do it is an educational experience and then allows the two of you to do this without masturbation, with your partner doing the things that you once did to yourself. And now they have that knowledge of what really is pleasurable to you. And it opens up so much communication. The message I'm trying to send to all of you is that you need to take the time and energy to learn what pleases you and be involved with doing things that you and your partner both get excited about. One of the big messages, say goodbye to your television. Take the TV off the wall if you have to, so that you and your partner can be the entertainment. Offer to do massages and unwind in your bed without the TV on, which then would allow you to, to have the opportunity to be intimate. Start sending racy text messages to one another. Sending these naughty messages is a great foreplay during the daytime that helps you and your partner really start thinking about and anticipating what might the night be. One of the ones that I want to really stress also is you have to say goodbye to your comfortable night shirts. No t-shirts. Put on that negligee. Put on a pair of underwear that looks like a tuxedo that hugs your penis. Do the things that will allow your partner to begin to, number one, know what you're wanting, and number two, allow you to be sexy for them. This is about keeping your partner interested. The other message is, and for some guys, this is a challenge, but I want to really talk with both the men and the women. I want you guys to just slow everything down. Think less about doing it and more about anticipation and enjoying the process. Increase your time of foreplay. Remember the saying, good things come to those who wait. If you rush this, you will have vanilla sex. It won't be enjoyable. It won't be fun. The other one that I want to talk about is something called role play. This is not for everyone, but role playing is really playing, acting the role. Some of the more common ones, obviously, is student and teacher. Cheeky French maid and the master of the house. Share your fantasies and do it together. Act them out in the privacy of your bedroom. I think there was a TV show that really made this well-known, Sex in the City, where they demonstrated on air what role-playing looked like, and so many people then began to do it. It really helped people's sexual relationship. The next one is get sweaty together. Exercise together. It increases dopamine, which does increase the sex drive and it gives you that endorphin boost. And then, more often than not, people don't care that they're hugging and kissing someone sweaty because they're sweaty too. And doing this together is just really exciting. The next one that I want to talk about are sex toys. You know, part of what we want is we want our sex life to be fun. And having sex toys and going into adult shops together to pick out sex toys are really a fun activity as a couple. Sure, they're usually really cheaply made and overpriced, but still part of what we want is to have a fun, exciting sexual experience. And what's more fun 
than going with your partner for them to pick out their own dildo. What's more fun than going in and picking out your own masks or bondage material or whips or costumes or looking at some of the, the books that are there or the videos together and doing it as a couple in this kind of place and coming home with your Christmas presents all figured out for one another. The most important thing is changing it up. That really having the concept of we can do this anywhere and in any way that both of us enjoy and that we should not focus our sex life just in the bedroom. A sexy game night can be so much fun. Cut up strips of paper and put them in a small bowl. Take turns picking up one and then acting that out. Sex games, exopoly, that's X-O-P-O-L-Y, I believe it is. And it's just like Monopoly, but it's for sex acts that you basically go around the board and it gives you things to do and places to go and places, things to buy. And during the game, it gives you a sex activity that you need to do while you're playing the games in order to, to build and get homes, just like Monopoly. The most important thing here, if we're talking about banishing boredom in the bedroom, is have it be fun. Play with food. You know, the worst advice your mother probably gave you was that you shouldn't play with food. I don't think she was talking sexually because whipped cream can be really fun. Chocolate can be fun. Candy can be fun. Whatever it is, try to incorporate your food into your sexual relationship. If you want to spice up the bedroom... Get your partner to lick whipped cream off your body. It's pretty fun. I guarantee you that. The most important thing here is sex should be an integral part of the relationship. You should be flirting with one another, going on date nights, spending time at a hotel, as we talked about before, and really changing up who initiates the sex. It doesn't have to be one gender or the other. Sometimes one person is less comfortable than the other. Don't let that become more important than the fact that you're both willing participants to be intimate and really have a loving, caring relationship in which the two of you really see each other as in love emotionally and that your body and your partner's body are there for the asking for that the two of you do this together willingly, no one crossing any lines, it's a violation of boundaries, but that the two of you have a relationship that is romantic, erotic, sexual, communicative, emotional, and that both of you really see each other as desiring to be lifelong partners and where both of you are stimulating each other in every single way, in every single day, in every single situation that's out there. I want to thank you again for joining me today. And remember, our love life is more about emotional connection, less about a physical act. But what we have to do is make sure that our relationships also include variety, stimulation, love, and making love is what our life is about to your best friend who is the partner in your life. Take care, stay connected, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. This episode has ended, but your journey continues. Head over to www.thecouplesexperts.com to access all the links and resources mentioned in this episode, as well as bonus content exclusive to podcast listeners. Enjoyed this episode? Why not hit subscribe now and never miss an episode? 